Okay, the next item is on page 35, or starts on page 35, and it's Stormwater System Management Plan. There's a recommended motion on page 39. Who would like to move and second this? I'll move. Second. Moved by Councillor Cordova. Looking for a seconder. A second. Didn't actually catch Councilor. who that was. Councillor Westwood. Councillor Westwood. Councillor Cordova. Thank you very much, Mayor. This is a very timely report and it's almost auspicious, or should I say inauspicious, that we're currently receiving uh, a massive um, the dumping of rain this evening here in Kingborough as we look to uh, pass the report summarising the findings of Council's developed stormwater system management plan. Uh, and there's a number of recommendations here which I can take us through or which will come out in the discussion tonight. But essentially, uh, at this time, uh, there's been uh, an incredible amount of work that's gone into what is a very comprehensive and detailed report that makes a number of very sensible and pragmatic recommendations. Uh, one of which is that what we're looking at here is a, is a sort of high level assessment of the current level of service provided by Council's stormwater network. And I would have to say that the, the um, management plan makes a very interesting re reading indeed and demonstrates, I think, the kind of investment that will be required and the kind of attention to detail that will be required to make sure that we are providing uh, the kind of stormwater network that is fit for purpose. And so to me, some of the key highlights from this is that this um, stormwater management plan identifies that we've got about nine and a half thousand pipes across Kingborough. We've got 4,400 manholes approximately, 3,700 entry pits and 5,000 house connections. Now of those, 32% um, have less than a 39% AEP capacity. Now AEP is the annual exceedance um, uh, percentage. So when we talk about a one in 100 year flood, uh, that is a 1% AEP. So when we talk about 32% of, so 3,000 of the 9,500 pipes have a less than, they could withstand a less than one in two year flood or stormwater event. Similarly, 53% have a less than 5% AEP. So another way of saying that is 53, half of Kingborough's stormwater pipes could not withstand a one in 20 year storm event. So these are quite alarming, but it's also crucial information for us to have at our fingertips in order to implement sensible policies to try and mitigate some of this. And so I really do want to thank um, Mr. Aronson for compiling, that's the stormwater engineer, for compiling this incredible report showing that nearly one in three pipes in Kingborough, 28% of the pipes in Kingborough have a diameter of 225 mil or less, which means that they're prone to blockages. It's an insufficient, um, it's an insufficient diameter. And so the council should consider adopting a minimum pipe size for future developments. Um, I do have a couple of questions that I would like to ask, but I also just want to point out that this report is, is very comprehensive and very interesting, and particularly in terms of its flood risk management um, and going through H1 to H6 of the various risk levels that are provided, uh, which outline uh, our current 10 hotspots or 10 risk areas. So um, without meaning to cause alarm, it's worth noting that this report mentions that there are 33 hotspots that were identified in the municipality of Kingston and the top 10 being Channel Court Shopping Centre, Coles Kingston Plaza, the Kingston Gateway Plaza, um, and, and you can read the rest there on page 37 of the report. I think the recommendations are, are the, the takeaway message there, but um, spend some time familiarising yourself with the maps um, because it really is quite interesting to read. We need to incorporate the findings of this report and the overflow uh, mapping into our planning processes and that's that's a really big takeaway for me. We need to develop a stormwater management policy to support our ongoing planning. We need to undertake detailed flood risk uh, management studies and we need to provide preliminary overland uh, flow mapping to emergency agencies and then implement this in our ongoing strategic planning. We're living through an age of increased climate related events as a result of anthropogenic climate change we are going to see more storm surges. I note that today they anticipated 50 mil of rain and in the May 2018 flood events, it was about 180 mil of rain that we received during those May 18 flood events, which caused um, such inundation across our municipality. The detail of this report allows us to identify where the risk is and allows us then to take steps to mitigate that. So I would like to again, thank, the, uh, thank Mr. Aronson and also ask a question. Uh, my first question is, uh, what was the AEP of that May 2018 flood event? 
Mr. Aronson. Uh, through you, Mayor. So the May 2018 event was an interesting one because it came through as um, different rainfall cells. So it was very different from area to area. So and it's the AEP event is um, also depending on what sort of time frame you look at. So I know in Hobart um, they had a one in a one. 180 year event locally that other regions experience much less. So it's really difficult to say, but it's, we just know that some areas experience severe flooding and some were more fortunate. Thank you. My second question, Mayor, is um, it says in the report that many pit inlets in Kingborough are less than 500 mil deep and therefore that small size means that they're prone to flow surcharge and it says that insufficient pit sizes resulting in insufficient flow capture is quite common throughout the municipality. Uh, my question is, is there a sense of how much it would cost to rectify to best practice? Um, you know, is, yeah, is there a sense of the cost to Kingborough at this moment to bring things up to standard? Um, Mr. Aronson or Mr. Reid or, or both, if you've got something to contribute. Uh, through you, Mayor. Um, I don't have a figure, but I would say it's quite likely it's um, too costly. Uh, you would rather have to look at new new investments or where you are already doing upgrades that you bring that up to scratch, but going across the whole municipality to bring everything up to current standards. Uh, there will probably be better investments made in looking at sort of more strategic planning and having the information at hand, knowing where you would have flooding or surcharging um, and the likes. But maybe Mr. Reeve has some more to add. Uh, yeah, through you, Mayor. Look, I'd support that viewpoint there. I mean, the problem we've actually got out there is there's a lot of infrastructure out there. What we try and concentrate on is the areas which are going to cause the most grief to people. Um, so rather than taking a, a blanket rule that will go and replace all of our pits out there, we would just concentrate on the ones where we've identified there's um, particular issues, uh, particularly where there is a pit there where we know that if it overflows there, there's not a nearby overland flow path for it to actually travels through safely there, it's more likely to actually come down into someone's driveway or into someone's um, property. Um, so it's all about targeting where we're actually going to spend money. Um, so I think that's, that's the most important thing. So this particular study there is a fairly high level study and what it does do is it provides um, lots of things for us to actually follow up on. Thank you, Mayor. One more question with your indulgence or maybe two. Uh, the stormwater data was found to be incomplete, where approximately 60% of pipe invert levels were missing and approximately 1% of pipe dimensions were missing. Can I get a sense of how much more work to, needs to be done to bring our data up to speed where we can make accurate assessments of the situation? How much more work needs to be done in data gathering alone? Mr. Aronson. Uh, through you, Mayor. Um, I don't have a, an exact response to that, but what we do do is that we do collect data uh, when we have particular investigations that we want to make, like when we have a catchment investigation in the CAPEX program. If data is missing, we do detailed survey to collect the missing data so that we can do an accurate catchment investigation and uh, go into the details to investigate where we do need to do our upgrades and where upgrades are best spent as well, um, where they would be the best investment. But um, across the whole human healthy, I don't have a number, but that's sort of the approach. Sure. Thank you, Mayor. I'd add to I've that. Yep. Just to add to that one, um, it is fairly common across all municipalities there that they will not have this type of information on their pipes there. So having invert levels on, on all your pipes there um, appears to be more of a luxury than a, than a normality in terms of other municipalities as well. So we are no different to anybody else. 
Thank you very much for those answers. My final question, Mayor, the study area included the urban areas of Taruna, Bonnet Hill, Kingston, Blackman's Bay, Margate, Electrona, Snug, Conningham, and Kettering. And I note that there was some limited data available for Kettering. It also mentions the drainage network and design drawings that were looked at for Spring Farm Estate and Whitewater Park. My question is actually about the formal planning instrument. It says that currently council does not have a formal planning instrument to manage the design and implementation of stormwater infrastructure within the Kingborough Council local government area. So I would like um, somebody to give me a, an understanding of what needs to be done to rectify this and what a formal planning instrument um, might achieve and when we can uh, implement that if it is indeed something that is necessary. Uh, Mr. Ferrier, perhaps, or, or any, I may be wrong. Mr. Aronson, even, who knows? Yeah, through you, Mayor. Uh, so, what we're saying there is we're really looking for um, some documents and guidelines in how um, to to do best practice stormwater management for new developers. Um, and the current planning scheme is quite limited, and we do know that in the in the new uh, Tasmanian planning provision, it will be even more limited. Uh, but we are working in collaboration with the other um, South Tasmanian councils to develop a stormwater management strategy, um, not to replace existing strategy, but a, a sort of a, a framework and guideline so that developers and people who want to develop land, they can actually know this is what council um, expect of you to do. And here's some advice on how you can achieve the outcomes we're looking for. Um, basically to provide more guidance. And that's something we're currently working on and hoping uh, to have progress by the end of this year. Thank you, Mayor, that's all from me. Councillor Cordova. Thank you kindly, Mayor, and thanks once again to the author of this report and the authoriser for giving us such a comprehensive uh, snapshot, high level view of what needs to be done. We have heard in the discussion tonight that some quite alarming statistics and it's auspicious that this is happening on a day of you know a big storm in Kingborough but this gives us a roadmap out and it tells us we've got a lot of work to do but there is a way out and it identifies some of those risks and challenges and puts us in a great position to be able to help mitigate the effects of those storms when they happen as councillor grace pointed out these these things do happen periodically and it's all about how do we best prepare our community keep our property and people safe and also uh, prepare and plan ourselves for the future recognizing that there will be more of these in the wake of anthropogenic climate change we've heard that one in three of our stormwater pipes currently cannot withstand a one in two year storm one in two of our stormwater pipes cannot withstand a one in 20 year storm. We've got some ineffective entry pits and lintels that are ineffective. We've got some insufficient pit capacities across the municipality. And of course, we've got that challenge where 40% of, of the stormwater pipes we're talking about in the network are on private land. And so, um, you know, without correct easements or, or standards. And so there's some challenges there. But despite all of these alarming statistics, I reiterate that by council having done the hard work now and invested in this high level plan, being able to move forward with an evidence-based and data-driven approach by utilising the excellent skills of the staff and management who have been working together to give us this high-level um, policy, uh, this high-level report, we are now able to use the best information available to hand to fix some of these problems and plan for the future. So I want to thank everybody involved with this and I highly commend uh, this stormwater system management plan to the council. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. So the motion is on screen um, and it was moved by Councillor Cordover, seconded by Councillor Westwood. Um, it's as on screen and as printed in the agenda, so I won't read all the way through it, but I will go through the list. So councillors want to unmute themselves and say yes if they agree with the motion and no if they do not. Councillor Westwood. Yes. Councillor Bastone. Yes. Councillor Cordova? Yes. Councillor Fox? Yes. Councillor Grace? Yes. Councillor Midgley? Yes. Councillor Street? Yes. Councillor Moss? Yes. Councillor Reed? Yes. Councillor Winter is also yes. The motion's carried unanimously.